I want to go over the tips on how I created some of the techniques for these cards. So what I have are some art crayons. I have, like I said, the cool, the cool and the warm set. We're going to use one of the new Vicky Boot and Water brushes. These come in a set of six with a great price point. And I have a black ink pad. This one is a Ranger Archival Ink in Jet Black. This is my new foundation paper, which is super thick, 140 pound card. It is nice and smooth. It accepts the ink and stamping really well. I also have a stamping block. I have the, a sheet of acrylic to paint on craft mat, and of course, the stamp set. So I'm gonna take that stamp, so it's this flower, okay, to make these awesome uh, watercolor stamped images. Those are the colors that we're gonna use. So what you're gonna do is lightly color on your stamp base with the crayon. So you just, you don't have to press hard. If you press hard, you're gonna get tons of the little pieces of the art crayon in the grooves of the stamp and you don't need that and also I don't want you to break your crayon you don't need to do that just press lightly so just give it a couple of mess and then you take your foundations paper sorry it's hard working with the injured finger and then just stamp it and you can see look at how fun is that and now I'm going to do another one with a little bit more orange Okay, and a little bit more water. So let's take a little bit of the darker orange on there and see what we get. Okay, put that on there. A little bit of the yellow. And what you're gonna find with this next one, I'm gonna show you, you don't have to color every time you missed. There's so much pigment in these crayons, you get uh, quite a few images stamped. I'm gonna put it over here, a couple mists, and let's start in this corner. Look at that. Oh, I love it. And look, I don't even have to re-ink it. Isn't that super easy? So you just put them on your card, leave enough space so that you can die cut. And then we were talking about loading a brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of water. I'm gonna color my crayon into it to make paint. And I also can press the little, right here, do you see the little push button? That is what will release water from the reservoir. If I don't press a button, no water comes out, and that's what makes a good watercolor brush. You don't want it leaking water while you're working because watercoloring is all about controlling the water. That's the magic in watercolor. You can paint right off the tip of this, load the brush, tap, then to get your little paint drops. Super fun, right? Super easy. It's kind of dark, so I'm only getting a light source from the side, so I hope this video is gonna be clear enough for you guys to see. So that's it for these. I did that, then I took the die, cut them out, and foam squared them up and layered them. But I love the stamp set, because look at all your possibilities and color palette. You don't have to be dependent only on the colors I choose. You can do whatever you want there. So I'm gonna clean this up and we are going to do the little birdie. And let's grab the little birdie guy. I love this pattern. Isn't it cute? Can you see that? That's what's in the stamp set. So let's put him on. Try not to bleed through my Band-Aid. I really did a number on my finger. What a doorknob. Okay, so put that guy on there. I'm gonna take the purple and add some detail around the middle of his wing and maybe the tip of his tail. I'm gonna take the light green and kind of do the whole body of the bird and his little feet and maybe a little bit on his tail. Let's do that there. Take some of the turquoise and add detail in the wing and then maybe that dark blue for his eye. Oh, get that little flake off there. A little bit of his beak, and then maybe even a little on the tail. Okay, his toes, if birds have toes, or his little feet. I don't know if a bird has a toe. I don't think so. It's a little flick of the flake, 
and then I'm going to mist it with a couple blasts of water. The more water I add, the more of a watercolor effect, the less water, the more um, sharper pigment effect. So let's see what we get here. Because you know, it doesn't work every time. Sometimes I have to play around with the amount of water and the amount of ink. See, that's a little bit wet. So it's okay, let's stamp another one and see what we get. Oh, that's better. And another one. Oh, I love it. So let's drip, that was all drippy. <clears throat> Clean that off, but to give you an idea. So the more water you use, the more of a watercolor effect. The less water you use, the crisper the effect. This is what the card looked like. And these guys were all done with that technique. Super fun, let it dry, and then use the uh, steel rule die and cut them out. So those are two techniques using Art Crayon directly on a stamp. And now I wanna show you a really easy background. So what I'm gonna do is take the sheet of acrylic and I'm gonna put the blue right on it, right on the acrylic sheet. I'm gonna mist it with some water and I'm gonna blend it with the paintbrush. I'm gonna just drip some of that off so I can clean my brush. So just take that on your paper towel and then blend the background. So just get some water on there. This is how you make watercolor with the art crayons. Don't take the crayon and color directly on the paper and then try to blend it, because it won't work. Paper has fibers in it, and there's a memory in the fiber, so the crayon will sit in the grooves of those fibers and you can never blend it out without pilling your paper. So you're better off to create your paper off-site or your paint off-site and then transfer it to whatever you want to paint. What I love with this is even though I have diluted it with water, you still have a heavy pigment load. So that is how I did the background, like that, and stamped it on. And I'm gonna take a little bit off just so I don't drip it when I move it. And that's, I paint a background. So just with the kissing technique, which you may have saw some of the videos where I said, kiss it like it's your grandma, not like it's Brad Pitt. You wanna be gentle. If you press too hard, you'll splat. You won't leave any uh, white open spots. So once you do that, I then let it dry, but we're gonna cheat for time's sake and put my stamp back on my stamping block. And then I inked it with black. And like I said, a good black stamping ink. So it will stay put. And then you just can find the section, like that looks pretty, and then just kind of stamp in it. Like I said, oops, that one I moved with my finger injury, so let's do it again. And then you just find your section, and you stamp. And then again, you can cut those out. So this makes watercoloring super simple. You don't have to be nervous about, oh, where am I gonna put the paint? It's super simple. Let me show you the card with that one on it. There it is. So that's how I did that background. I kissed it to a sheet of white paper. And like I said, the foundations cardstock in my new line is really thick, stamped on it, and then die cut them. That's super fun. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So we also have traditional watercoloring. So I'm gonna show you one technique for this. So take uh, your card, you can use watercolor paper or you can use the foundations cardstock or a heavier cardstock that you have and you stamp your images. I let the ink dry, but again, for time's sake, I'm just gonna paint. So I'm gonna clean my watercolor brush off again, just press the uh, reservoir, clean your paint off your brush this is why I love watercolor brushes. Remember I said these come in six. So there's six different brush tips in the set that I have. And I'm going to make my palette with some orange. Oops, I broke it. But don't worry about it. I actually prefer the broken crayons. I pressed a little too hard. You don't have to use your Herculean, oh my goodness, Vicki. <laughs> your Herculean strength to get that out. It doesn't require much. But it's okay, like I said, I actually prefer the broken crayons because I can get more pigment off of them. So I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna blend out the orange as well. Now, with this technique, instead of coloring directly on the paper, I like to take clean water, so I'm 
brushing that off, and actually float clean water into the pattern. What that's gonna do is I can then take pigment and float it in to that watercolor background so it kind of avoids um, harsh lines. So by putting a wet background, I'm gonna paint wet on wet. So then I can load the brush, I'll start with the yellow, and I can just float it in. See, just by touching it, I don't have to really work too hard to get placement of that paint. And then you can see, hopefully, that's just floating it in the white, in the wet, wet on wet. And then I'm not even gonna clean the brush because I'm okay with that. I like to wick the water so it takes most of the moisture out, but I'm only left with pigment. And then I can go in and put a little detail in there. So if I wanted a little bit of the orange closer to the petals and maybe in the center, I can do that. But look how much pigment is in these art crayons. So if you're newer to watercoloring and you don't want to invest a lot of money in a set of watercolors, this is a great tool. As well, I have lots that's coming that I'm going to show you with one of the new tools that I brought out for creativation, all the things you can do with the art crayons. So that is one way you can watercolor paint. And then let's just show the traditional. And I'm going to ink up my little birdie, stamp him on hopefully with this injury and I hope it's not bleeding outside the band-aid because I really did cut the tip of my finger off. Such a doorknob. Right, stamp him on and then I'm going to color him like these guys. Look how fun that is. So that's what the cool set. So then I just traditionally watercolored. Again, set up the palette that I want to use. So some blues and some green little bit of purple and I could certainly use if I want some yellow in there let's put that in there and then have my brush I'm going to add the water to blend the paint clean it off blend the green and I can make new colors from these art crayons just by blending whatever I want if I wanted to have a, a Purp the blue and purple make a new color. I could definitely do that. There was still purple in there, so I've made a new color of yellow. And then I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of the paint. I'm making new colors because they're bleeding together. Wick a little bit of it out on my paper towel, and then just go in and paint the background of my bird. So this is just direct to paper. I didn't wet the background. I just want to add some pigment. If it's not strong enough, go ahead and just add some more right into your water, right? More pigment, less water, I'll get bolder color. And then just go ahead and color that on. Put some detail on there. These really work well. And then even just in the tail a little bit. If I wanna build the uh, value or the depth of the color, just let it dry a bit and then go in and add detail. Does that make sense? If you wanna layer the green and build the depth of the green, it will work much better than putting it on a dry layer rather than working wet on wet. Because if you have the wet on wet, all you do is kind of move the color around and run the risk of pilling the paper. If I wait for it to dry, then I can definitely build some of the depth in the color, like make the green darker. That's fun. So there, that is another technique, again, that I used with this card. So all of these cards are posted as still images on my blog. I'm gonna put my blog address in the um, description underneath this video, and I hope you'll check it out. If you have any questions, let me know. But thanks for joining me and taking a look at the 20 cards I make from the HSN card kit. See you later.